good to be back. A big thank you to everybody who supported me during this uh, hard time. The surgery is uh, in the past. I want to move really fast uh, and I just want to have some fun creating content. I will have a separate video about the surgery and the things uh, around it. But like I said, let's have some fun with music, plugins, mixing, mastering and uh, hardware. Today I want to talk to you about a plugin that got my attention because it has a pretty big name in the industry attached to it. I'm talking about the Magic Flow. This is a plugin from Josh Goodwin in collaboration with uh, Studio DMI in collaboration with Acoustic Audio. So we have three different parties involved in uh, creating this particular uh, plugin. This is not sponsored, not endorsed. This is the demo because I really want to be able to say exactly how I feel about plugins, how I feel about the workflow, the good and the bad. And I'm doing this because I want to be 100% honest in my demos, in my reviews. I think that's the way to go moving forward. 100% transparency. With that being said, I have a cool session uh, from uh, Luke Baker. I will have the track in the description. It sounds uh, like this. I have Magic Flow inserted on the two bus, but first let's talk about the interface. I actually like the interface. It is a bit strange in the beginning with how everything is laid out, but once you understand the flow, the Magic Flow, everything uh, is uh, easy afterward. We have a couple of different modules and the plugin is based on Josh Goodwin's workflow. So we have filters, peak leveling, dynamic EQ, dynamic resonance controller, dynamic balance, a preamp output, then we have input level and an output gain, plus we have the quality, a really cool insert and wet dry. I've uh, installed the plugin yesterday, I've played with it uh, for a bit and this is how I like using it. I like starting with the insert. The insert is based or it's an emulation of Josh hardware processing that lives probably on the tubas. This is uh, without it. <laughs> It's a really big difference in terms of sounds, especially in the mid-range and the bass. It sounds a bit more scooped, a bit more control in the mid-range with more bass and I actually like the sound for a modern uh, track like this. After I've decided if I like or not the insert, I go to the input level because the plugin has, you can see it on the screen, a suggested level. This helps with how hard you are hitting the plugin. Let's play uh, the track and set the suggested uh, level. With just those two settings, everything sounds a bit more punchy and I like the low end. It's more controlled but it has a certain weight to it. Then we have filters. The filters are pretty smooth and with the high cut you can tame some of those nasty top ends that you can achieve with over processing.
but they work great together with everything. And I'm saying that because if we move to the peak leveling, this module adds some top end. From my understanding, the peak leveling is an EQ into a compressor, or it might be the other way around, but I know that Josh said in a video that it has an EQ, so it's adding some top end. That's why I like using the peak leveling with the high cut. I'm using the peak leveling just for the brightness of it. I'm not touching the compressor, maybe point of uh, dB of gain reduction, nothing that you can hear. Then we have a dynamic EQ section, and this has four modes. In my opinion, mode D was made for mastering or uh, two bus processing. I actually like it on uh, this uh, mix. This is with dynamic EQ in mode D. In the middle of the screen we have a multi-purpose display that shows you exactly what you're doing. You can see that mode D doesn't touch the bass that much. That's why I believe it's made more specifically for mastering and two bus processing. If we move to a different mode, let's say mode B, you can see that we are touching the low end way too much for mastering. I like D and A the, the best in this scenario, but D works amazing on this uh, source material. One thing that I dislike or not really dislike but it's a bit annoying is that you have to read the manual to understand the audio path. I have no idea uh, if the peak leveling is uh, before the dynamic EQ or vice versa. My logic says that it's from left, right, top, bottom, so we have filters into peak leveling, into dynamic EQ, into dynamic uh, resonance controller, into dynamic balance EQ, uh, preamp and uh, mid bump. I might be wrong. I wish that there was like a line indicating the signal uh, path. That's uh, one complaint that I have about the, the plugin. Now moving to the dynamic resonance controller. This can be used to clean stuff up, to tame nasty frequencies. Frequencies that are annoying, frequencies that are just a bit too much. One great feature is the auto solo.
I would say that this is a great utility tool. One thing that I like, and I think that's the case, is that this goes to maximum minus 2 dB of gain reduction. So you cannot overcook uh, your mix. Great for cleaning up the bad and the nasty. Then we have Dynamics Balance. This is probably a mastering compressor with two settings or maybe even two different uh, compressors altogether. For this uh, track, I don't think it's adding anything uh, beneficial. Let's move to the EQ. We have four different styles. The styles are just an EQ curve. I believe Josh stated that it's modeled on the music EQ from Elysia. I have that in my rack. It's an amazing clean uh, EQ that adds that analog uh, sound to a mix or a master. I like what the first EQ curve does to this particular mix and I will keep that. The preamp will add some saturation, some compression. Let's see if it adds anything beneficial to the mix. In this case I don't think it adds what I'm looking for. It adds some low mids that uh, I don't like on this uh, particular uh, track. Uh, let's uh, try the mid bump. The mid bump I actually like, it brings everything a bit more forward, a bit more in your face. Let's do an AB. This is without magic flow. The difference is night and day and I actually think that it adds a really nice texture and it improves the mix by quite a lot. So for me the plugin 
is a winner on the two bus. A great addition is the dry wet. In uh, this scenario, I believe I overcooked the processing a bit, so I can just reduce the dry wet. That way we can still retain some of that original uh, sound. Now what I want to do is try it out on the vocals because I believe this is where this plugin is going to shine as a vocal finisher. Just like in the case of the two bus processing, I will start by trying out the insert and see if it sounds better off or on. I believe it sounds better with the insert on. You saw that I've pushed more level into the plugin. Let's go to the peak leveling and see if I like that top end it adds on uh, this vocal. High up in the hills with you. So tell me why I gotta do Cause I need you high up in the hills with you So tell me why I gotta do Cause I need you high up in the hills with you So tell me now let's move to the dynamic EQ. This is where I think the plugin will make a really big difference. Me why I got it do Cuz I need you high up in the hills with you So tell me why I got it do Cuz I need you high up in the hills with you so tell me why I got it do Cause I need you high up in the hills with you So tell me why I got it do Cause I need you high up in the hills with you I actually like the dynamic EQ in the B mode So tell me why now with the resonance uh, controller, I can tame some of that mid-range that I don't like. So tell me why I got it do Cause I need you Why I got it do Cause I need you with you so tell me why I got it do I wish that the, this entire module had a makeup uh, gain. Dynamic balance, let's try it out. Oh, cause I need you high up in the hills with you. So tell me why I got it do. Cause I need you high up in the hills with you. So tell me why I got it do Cause I need you Or even a master threshold to dial back the processing that I've made there Now I have to go through individual uh, knobs It's uh, a workflow thing High up in the hills with you so tell me why I got it do I like the dynamics uh, balance off. Let's see what we can add with the EQ. Oh, 
Cause I need you high up in the hills with you So tell me why I gotta do Cause I need you high up in the hills with you I like the second style best on this vocal Let's try the preamp This is without it So tell me why I gotta do Cause I need you high up in the hills with you So tell me why I got We can keep that on and uh, finally let's try the mid bump High up in the hills with you So tell me why With the mid bump I actually don't like the raspy tone that uh, it gives to this particular uh, vocal, so I will keep that off. This says before. High up in the hills with you. And after. High up in the hills with you. So tell me why I got to Subtle, but it does a really great job to take the vocals to a next level. These are just two cases where you can use Magic Flow. Now a bit of a rant. This is probably one of the first uh, acoustic audio plugins that I'm trying out and that I actually I am tempted to purchase. Previously when I wanted to try their plugins out they had issues uh, and from my experience with them they are CPU intensive so uh, they are not the most friendly uh, plugins uh, available. I like to move fast, I think workflow is really important and this plugin is different from the other Acoustica plugins. If I change the quality to Superb, you can see that I don't have that big of a CPU increase. It's noticeable, but it's not the end of the world. Another thing that annoyed me previously with uh, Acoustica Audio plugins was that they had a couple of milliseconds lag. If you played shooters like Counter-Strike or uh, I don't know, Modern Warfare, you know that lag is a big thing. Lag means that you have a delay between the action and when the plugin reacts. With this plugin is not the case. It reacts pretty instant when it comes to bypassing and enabling. Previously when I've tried out, I don't know, years ago, Acoustic Audio plugins, they had a strange lag. You click a couple of milliseconds, then something happens and that sucks. It hinders the, the workflow, it hinders the ability to do A being really fast. But like I've said, it's not the case with this plugin. A cool plugin, it's not a must, but it shows something uh, that's a bit more valuable. It shows the flow of uh, Josh Goodwin, a really big mixing engineer. It shows the processing that he has. I might have to purchase this plugin in the future because it sounds good on mastering and it sounds good on vocals. With that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. I'm back and uh, see you guys uh, really, really soon. Cheers.